People have been reporting strange things over Elliott Lake since at least the early 1960s. Sudbury's Daily Star newspaper ran a story on July 28, 1961 about three men who were baffled by two bright objects in the sky. Millican miner Fred Wendy had just gotten off work late in the evening at 3.15 a.m. While walking home, he spotted two bright objects which he assumed at first were stars. They moved at a tremendous speed, however, faster than any stars in the sky. They moved in a jerky fashion, too. They'd spin halfway around, then spin back halfway, Wendy told the star. When he returned home, he called for his roommate, Tony, and a neighbor, Jack Wilson, both of whom were still awake, to come outside and watch. They were just a mite larger than a star, and very bright like stars. One was moving north and one south, and the one object flew directly over us. Wendy noted that the objects were at a tremendous height, and it was almost by accident that he noticed the jerky movements. Even Jack Wilson, whom Wendy acknowledged did not have great eyesight, could see the objects after they had been pointed out to him. For half an hour, the men stood watching the objects. Eventually, they grew tired and retreated into their homes to go to bed. On March 30th, 1966, a group of boys, Quim Quibo, 10 of 61 Lakeview, and Donald Lundy, 12 of 30 Poplar Avenue, Two students at Elliott Lake Central Avenue School, both amateur astronomers, were standing outside on the lawn of a town police headquarters with Robert Quibo, Craig Bartlett, and Darcy Rodney when they observed a strange object overhead. We were looking at a constellation called the Belt of the Hunter when we saw this orange glow appear within the star group. It stopped and it just stayed there. All of a sudden it changed to a vivid blue and then moved again and we followed it right across the sky until it disappeared almost due north. Lundy told the Daily Star, who wrote of the sighting in the next day's newspaper. Quibell noted that the object, before disappearing from view, changed again in color to a yellowish brown. Lundy's parents, also there watching the sky with the children, confirmed that they too had watched the appearance. The children had run inside the police station to get the attention of some officers, but of course they didn't believe them. On November 25, 1968, Raleigh Peach of 124 Mississauga Avenue who worked in law enforcement and later as a security guard, was heading north on Highway 108 at around 6.45 p.m. when he noticed a bright moving object in the sky which trailed a tail of light similar to a shooting star. While observing the moving light, Pichet noticed that it had a red and green light on it. It was about a thousand feet up. Over the town site, it emitted a bright flash of light similar to the firing of a flash bulb or electronic strobe, he told the Daily Star. Pichet claimed that it continued its easterly flight until it disappeared behind the ski hill traveling in the direction of Nordic Mine. 1990, Michael M. Deschamps of the North American UFO Research and Study Group spoke with Don Campbell, a former teacher and head foreman of the Copper Cliff Wilding Shop up until 1985 when he retired. Campbell from Sudbury had compiled numerous bizarre UFO accounts from friends and family and even had a number of experiences himself. In the late 1960s, Campbell claimed that his brother-in-law, Art, who worked at the Algome Nordic Mine in Elliott Lake, had a couple of strange experiences that he related to him. Art claimed that one morning about 50 mine workers going in through the gates between 7.15 and 7.30 a.m. observed a silver craft hovering over the gates silently. It was a clear morning and Art remembered how the sunlight bounced off its body. The sighting by 50 mine workers of a strange object even made it into the Elliott Lake press. Later, Art was inspecting a tailings line during the graveyard shift. As he walked down to the end where it's dumping out, he noticed a light shining in the tailings pond. Art thought it was strange and began moving closer to see what it was. As he approached, he saw an object start to rise up. It then turned on its lights and a few seconds later it was gone. Art walked down the steps and across the hard section of the pond with his flashlight. He observed a definite indentation like a big saucer had sat right in the pond. The next morning, he reported his sighting to other people, including the foreman. Other employees walked and drove out to take a look. They confirmed an approximate 50-foot circle indentation in the pond. Other people, including the press, were called in. They were there with Geiger counters and cameras. Many pictures were taken of it, and it even made it into the news. On July 17, 1972, 16-year-old Marilyn Collis of 26 Blackwell Road was returning home with two friends sometime between midnight and 1 a.m. when they noticed a round orange disc traveling across the sky over Elliott Lake. Collis noted that the object emitted a humming sound with an intermittent beeping. It traveled north towards Elliott Lake and was last seen descending north of the town. 
On March 10, 1999, at around 3 p.m., two men saw what appeared to be a glare moving across the sky while out ice fishing on Dunlop Lake near Elliott Lake. A silver bullet type thing is how one of the men described it, adding that it was a lot larger than a plane. The two men watched as the object flew above the trees about three to four miles away and then just disappeared. Both the top and lower halves were reflecting sunlight, he said, but the middle section was blurry. Five days later, on March 15th at around 3.40 p.m., a man driving from Elliott Lake on Highway 108 turned toward Highway 17, observed a cone-shaped object moving across the sky from west to east. It was white as a cloud. The front end of it was squared off and there was no vapor trail behind it. The man observed it for a minute, lost sight of it, then saw it again for three more minutes before it disappeared from view. On December 24, 2003, the day before Christmas, a witness who wished to remain anonymous, along with another person, observed a strange sight over Elliott Lake. Despite the fact that it was snowing heavily, they could make out odd-shaped objects in the night sky. According to the witness, they would change shape every five seconds or so. They had one dim green light on the front. The objects sat in the sky for approximately three minutes. Then they lowered extremely fast at around two minutes, but did not touch the ground. Suddenly one object began to glow red, then they disappeared. Witness believed the red light might have been a signal to leave. On Friday, May 30, 2008, a university student studying to be a teacher at around 9 a.m. was sitting in the outfield of the Clendons Park rookie ball diamond when they observed a very fast-moving red dot in the sky. They watched it for about 90 degrees of travel. The red light grew bigger and changed into a blue flicker flame. The light turned and began swirling the clouds in an opposite direction, then two wings appeared with bright yellow slits. It may not be wings because the clouds were moving so intensely, unlike anything I've ever seen, and thus were blocking the middle of the UFO. However, the object moved closer, and I observed the yellow slits to be vents sucking in the clouds, or at least the cause of the cloud disruption. It moved through the sky towards me unlike anything possible, did not make a sound, moved downward slightly, then disappeared. Witness ran to tell their friend as the two stood looking skyward, the UFO appeared above them, very large, for only a brief second or two before disappearing. The blue flame flickering light was on top in the middle of the oval craft, and I could only see the bright yellow vents sucking up or pushing away all the clouds. The turbulence from the vents made it impossible to distinguish what the middle and majority of the craft looked like. I believe that the two wings are not two wings, but one long line of bright yellow vents. And like I said earlier, the clouds were moving in a way that I thought not possible. This manipulation of clouds by strange objects as an obfuscation tool is occasionally reported by eyewitnesses. On September 11, 2008, a witness looking out their bedroom window of their sixth floor apartment noticed a brightly lit round object hovering just above the treetops over a nearby mountain range about 300 yards away. It was a clear moonlit night. They went out onto their balcony to get a better look. It hovered in one spot for three or four minutes, then suddenly dropped straight down behind the mountain out of sight, possibly landing in the forest. This seemed to be confirmed by the fact that the witness observed an orange glow that remained there until the morning light made it invisible to see. The same witness had another sighting six days later on September 17. From their window, they watched as a star-like object with an aura of colors danced about in the sky. As the witness contemplated waking up their roommate to see it, they looked away momentarily. When they looked back, the object had vanished. On September 25, 2009, at around 9.45 p.m., two witnesses observed what looked like a twinkling star in the western sky. It suddenly became much larger and they could distinguish many lights. They described it as oval shape with lights along the perimeter of the oval. Another incident that occurred between 1970 and 1972 was witnessed by a young boy, his mother and several of her friends. The boy was about 10 or 12 at the time of the event and came forward with a story in June of 2010. He claims that he was living with his mother in Elliott Lake. One day, late afternoon, just around dinner time, the witness and his mother walked outside and saw their neighbors standing around looking skyward. They looked up to see what they were staring at and observed a, quote, large, very bright, triangular shaped object that didn't seem to be moving. Unquote. 
A group of them stood watching it for some time, trying to figure out what it was. What happened next would throw everybody for a loop. After some time of this object being in the sky, we saw a military aircraft flying at a very strong angle, almost vertically heading straight towards the object. We could clearly see the contrail from what I am assuming was a fighter jet. Suddenly the jet disappeared. Gone. No sight of it at all. It did not turn around and head back, it just vanished. The stunned group stood watching it for a little while longer. No other aircraft went near it and eventually they all went inside. After supper, the boy peered outside and noticed it was gone. At school, a teacher told the students of his strange sighting while driving back from Sudbury. It was exactly what they had witnessed. One of the strangest aspects of the story, at least to the witness, was that there appeared to be no media coverage of the event, which may or may not have involved a military jet vanishing. Quote, the really surprising thing about this story is that I do not ever remember any media coverage regarding the sighting, nor have I seen anything on it at any sites that investigate sightings, the witness said. Anyone who follows ufology closely will recognize that these types of media coverage blackouts often follow big events involving UFOs. Was a triangular UFO responsible for a plane and its pilot disappearing over Elliott Lake sometime between 1970 and 1972? Whoever knows the answer certainly isn't saying. While strange objects busily move about the skies of Elliott Lake, scaring kids and possibly gobbling up planes, something else was being sighted in the area's forest. In the summer of 2004, a person driving on the heavily forested Spine Road in Elliott Lake would have a frightening encounter with a hairy bipedal creature of immense size. It was a gorgeous summer night in Elliott Lake between 10 and 11 p.m. A 38-year-old male was driving his van home going westbound along the Spine Road on Highway 108. The stretch of road had forest lining both sides of the roadway. He was going about 60 kilometers an hour when he descended to the bottom of a large hill. He bent to pick something up off the floor of the van. When he looked up, he saw a creature crossing the road in front of him about 15 feet away. It crossed the road in about two strides and walked straight across the road with no pauses, heading down towards the beach. The duration of the sighting was around two or three seconds. Witness did not see the creature's face, but he claimed that it stood somewhere between seven and eight feet tall, weighing between 300 and 350 pounds. The hair was dark red or auburn and wispy, not matted. Even though the lighting wasn't great, he believes that the hair length was between three and seven inches long. It had a slightly hunched posture. To the witness, it was swinging its arms as if it was clawing at the air. He added that the arms looked lanky and came down to mid-thigh, just above the knee as it walked in this hunched position. He believes that he may have startled the creature and noted that it was walking very quickly, almost hopping. The witness, who was in disbelief at what he was seeing, slowed down to watch it, but at no point did he leave his van and attempt to follow it as it moved down towards the beach. Canadian Bigfoot researcher Matt Mizzy talked with a witness and he believed that he was honest and genuine. The witness, an avid outdoorsman, was certain that what he saw was neither a bear or a man. Interestingly, only a few years later, in late August 2007, another Elliott Lake resident would have a similar encounter, also at night and not far from a beach, although what they encountered isn't as easily defined. A witness named Dominique, who enjoyed going for nightly walks in the forest trails around Elliott Lake, often only using the moonlight as a source of light, would encounter something very strange. One night while walking along Spruce Beach, a witness encountered a black bear emptying a garbage bin and scared it off. She stayed on the beach for another 15 or 20 minutes before making off along Spruce Road for home. That's when things became strange. 
Quote, after a bit, I couldn't hear any more noises. No birds, no wind, no waves, just dead silence. I thought it was a little weird at first, but paid it no mind, unquote. It was at this point strangeness would turn into outright horror as a very bizarre figure could suddenly be sighted in the darkness standing on the road. The creature was about the size of a dog, but whatever it was, it wasn't a dog. Quote, it was pitch black, had no tail. The body was kind of a mixture between a dog and a cat's, but it had a nearly perfect human face and weird glowing eyes. I just stopped it in my tracks. This thing was a good 60 to 90 feet away from me, but I felt like it was right next to me." Unquote. Dominique claims that she began to shiver with fright as the creature slowly advanced in her direction. Quote, All I could think of was, this is it, I'm going to die like this. It just slowly kept walking towards me. With every step it took, I felt colder and colder. I felt fear. It was a deep, primal fear. My very being felt like it was going to be devoured. As it got closer, a car came from behind the hill, and the light hit the thing, which ran into the woods without any sound." Unquote. After the creature ran off, Dominique claims that everything seemed to return to normal. The insect sounds, wind sounds, waves from down at the beach could all be heard again, as if waking from a dream. In her bid to get home, Dominique rapidly picked up her pace, although she felt as though she was being watched the entire time. Sometime later, she moved to Sudbury. The encounter still sends shivers up her spine when she thinks about it, and she swears that the account she relayed is 100% true. Dominique's description is interesting as it once again seems to suggest a type of Oz effect at work. The sounds of nature blotted out by eerie silence, followed by her encounter of a very strange creature. This follows the pattern laid out by so many witnesses before her. Had she encountered a type of alien entity? Had a craft landed not far away in the woods? Remember, it was less than one year later that an Elliot Lake man watched from his sixth floor apartment as a strange object descended and possibly landed in the woods. One can only wonder what might have happened to Dominique had that car not appeared to frighten whatever it was off.